Hey guys, it's Kaven with True Champion Gaming, and today we've got more of a fun, casual deck profile for y'all. So we've done polls in the past, and people seem to want casual in uh, addition to competitive profiles. So this is one that I've had a lot of fun playing. Um, it definitely just has some pretty much auto losses and isn't as maybe tier one as some other decks, which is okay, because sometimes playing uh, card games in Grand Archive isn't always about winning. It's about the silly things that you can do along your journey there. So. Let's just go ahead and jump right into the deck profile. So it is wind. We have uh, Spirit of Wind here and we're using Xander. So level one Xander, our only option at the moment. Um, glimpse two and then put a prep counter on your champion, which is really good. Prep counters is a big engine in this deck. So getting that first prep counter is going to help you out a lot. And glimpsing two is always really great in Xander because you can be a little bit bricky. We are playing the level two Xander. And uh, that's just because this is the only level two Xander that exists at the moment. So we do have another level two Xander coming eventually. It's a Proxy's Vault card that was spoiled at, or semi-spoiled at um, Ascent Auckland. We don't know exactly what it does, but it's gotta be better than this one because this is basically the worst champion that exists. Um, 22 health, you get plus one attacks on a rested unit, which half of Xander decks don't even attack. Like this one, this one, I, I don't think we play a way to attack. Um, so it's just really bad. Uh, and then we have the actual good Xander. So level three, both level three Xanders are pretty good. Um, this one is going to let you reveal all the cards in your memory at the beginning of your recollection. And then for each Luxem element card reveal, your opponent puts cards down from their memory and from their hand into their memory. So you can stop a little bit of counterplay on your turn. And the biggest reason that we play this is just purely to reveal the cards in your memory. Um, we're going to try to use him to get to a stabilization point with some of our Luxem cards, which we'll talk about later. Um, Luxura's map is crazy. It's, um, Demonic Tutor, if any of you guys have played Magic before. It's just search your, it essentially just search your deck for any card that you want. Put it into your memory, which is a downside because you don't get it into your hand to use right away. But it's also positive because if you're using it with our level 3 champion, you can immediately get that uh, reveal. You know, you search out for a Luxem site or something and you can immediately get that reveal effect, which is pretty good. So this card is crazy. And the, the only reason that you don't see more play is purely because it's Luxem typing. This one might look a little odd. That's because we don't have this card. So Isaac's gonna put up our, our he's our editor. He's gonna put up the Proxy's Vault image for this card. So this is the newest Proxy's Vault card. Um, really crazy effect, you know, like feel free to pause the video and read the card uh, in full. But basically we're going to be using it to um, try to do a combo with Luxura's map, this card and Thousand's Refractions to set up a um, pretty big damage turn, but also to like fully recover our resources and kind of do like an avarice loop, if you will. Um, so that once we're at level three with like no cards in hand, we can refill back up. and. Prep counters, like I said before, are also really important in the deck. So this card does actually fit a lot of uh, like it. It actually works in this deck because it's been hard to figure out how to actually use this card in um, in any Xander build so far. But I do actually like it in this one. Uh, and then speaking of prep counters, so Windwalker Boots, this is because we don't attack uh, until the very end with like Thousand Refractions or something like that. You're always going to be awake, so you're basically always going to be gaining a prep counter. Um, you can treat this as an extra GCR as well, because you can actually banish it if you have five or more prep counters to draw a card, which absolutely can come up. If you're in the super late game, you've already gotten a lot of prep counter generation, um, your opponent's swinging at you with something, and you just really need another defensive card, pop this, you know, and like it's just almost, almost infinite value. Um, Really, really big fan of this card because you can go into this like right away, get like a ton of prep counters throughout the game, and then at the very end, pop it to draw. Like it's crazy, actually. This is like one of my favorite. This is probably one of my favorite uh, assassin cards, if not my favorite assassin card. I just don't get to use it very often because, uh, you know, uh, assassin is still at a little bit of that more casual level right now. Uh, we have Quicksilver Grail. So Grail actually seems to go hand in hand with assassin pretty well sometimes. Um, Fire Xander will use Grail to protect the Poison Dagger that their whole win con relies on. Um, this deck will try to use a different, a couple different things. So you can use it actually with the new Proxy's Vault card if you want to kind of protect it. Um, maybe not let your opponent know exactly what you're doing 
um, smoke screening your, your strategy for a little bit longer. You can also use it with map. So the nice thing about map is that uh, map will enter in rusted, but you can similar to with poison uh, dagger, bring in grail, use grail to banish map. And then at the end of your opponent's turn, pop grail, bring in map. It comes in rusted, but then you move to your turn, restand it and use it immediately in that recollection. So um, again, kind of just like smoke screen what you had wanted to do. Uh, and then also the infamous grail and lantern strategy. So this is just pure defensive um, so that you don't die to a fire aggro deck. Uh, it's, it just felt pretty necessary. So then we also have orb of choking fumes. This is a really neat one. Um, it's very, it's not really played at all right now. So I think you could really like trick trip up some people with this. Um, them just forgetting that uh, things are going to cost one more. And you do get that class bonus of drawing a card. So if you somehow have an extra floating memory, this is a really cool option to go into. Or if you're really scared of like an incarnate or a Rai doing a bunch of crazy things with all of their um, arcane cards and everything, this can be a really, really good option to slow your opponent down a turn. We have Chalice of Blood, which feels a little awkward in this deck because you have so many uh, regalia items that you want to bring out in the late game, like map, like your uh, Proxy's Vault card and stuff. Um, however, this is just a crazy card. So you can kind of like manipulate pretty well in this deck. You can hit yourself with Light Rouge of Assault if you were just like, if you're at 18 and you really want to get to 20, just to like do this and draw two cards. So because you have like that kind of level of versatility, I really like it in the deck and it can help you to draw the cards that you need to stay alive as more of an immediate reward rather than like map and the Proxy's Vault card or more like long-term payoffs. Uh, Chalice of Blood can be a good one to go into right away. Um, and then we also have Terra Frank. This is really nice, obviously against aggro decks, but we also run Beseech the Winds. So it can be really good to like level up and not lose your tempo of leveling up um, in order to bring this out. And then you just Beseech Terra Frank. And it's kind of like you you played a three cost uh, card from hand on your turn that's giving you defense on the next turn. So I really like the Terra Frank in the deck. Before we move on to the main deck, we have a quick word from Isaac. Hey everyone, it's Isaac. If you want to support us, get merch, or pre-order the next set from GA, then you should check out our website. Over on our website, you'll find stickers, t-shirts, playmats, and material deck sleeves, and the next set of Grand Archive for pre-order. So make sure to check that out. Also, if you like content, then you should check out our Patreon. Over there, we have an exclusive podcast series, extra gameplay videos, and articles written by us to help your competitive gameplay. In any case, if you like what we do here on YouTube, then don't forget to like and subscribe as it does help us out a lot. Thank you. All right, so starting off with the main deck cards, we have four Fairies Whispers. So like I said before, Glimpse in Xander usually feels pretty necessary just because of kind of how bricky it can be, how clunky the whole strategy is and everything. Um, and we play a ton of wind cards. We play Veiling Breeze in here. So um, we wanted as many wind cards as we could possibly get which honestly, you know, there's still a pretty high count of non-win cards for running Veiling and Fairy Whispers. So it's not gonna be the most consistent engine, but you, we kind of just had to do what we had to do. So we have four Beseech in here as well. Um, like I said earlier, this can be used to bring out a Terrafring if you're against an aggro deck, but you don't wanna necessarily lose your um, level up. And this can also just be a really great way to just throw caution to the wind and just try to rank up as fast as possible. So if you start with this and uh, dungeon guide in your hand, you can just be like, okay, well, you know, I'm just going to get to level three and right away and there's nothing that's going to stop me. So uh, we also run a couple other cards in here that this is really good to be able to go back into your level one, which I'll explain that in a bit, but you're going to mainly be using Beseech for I, I, it's actually a pretty flexible card. You can I, I mainly use it for levels, but even when you hit level three, you can use Beseech to like, like I said earlier, you, you want to materialize so many things once you get to that late game, you can use Beseech to do that faster. So you can get out your map the same turn that you dungeon guide into a level three or something like that. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the card in this deck. We have three Dream Fairy, you could probably go four. Um, we play multiple things that can put allies in the hand. So that's why I have three in here right now, but getting rid of your opponent's incarnates, uh, you know, just using this against an ally beat deck that's trying to swarm you down with Aces and uh, stuff like that. You know, Dream Fairy and your opponent's Arthur, that's a classic broken combo. Um, so Dream Fairy just like is a really good defensive card. Then we have four Swift Recruit. 
Uh, we are going to need a lot of floating memory in this deck. You are going to level up um, quite a lot, especially with one of the defensive cards that we run in here. So it's defense, it's floating memory, it checks all the boxes. We have four reclaim. So these you can use just with a swift recruit uh, to get like that floating memory and then drop on the first turn just to level up into rank one. Uh, and then you can replay the swift recruit the next turn and go into level two that way. So really good combo there. Um, you can also just use it with dream fairies to keep controlling the board and stuff like that. Um, it it just, it works in the deck for sure. And you being able to reclaim like a dungeon guide if you want to try to dungeon guide into two and three is a really good strategy too. All right, here is the where the deck starts to get cool, okay? So, four ensnaring fumes. Like I said, we definitely rely on preparation counters in this deck, and this card feels insane every time you play it. Um, I just, I can't believe this card exists, honestly, uh, <laughs> but it's not broken necessarily. Like, obviously no one's really playing it at big tournaments or anything, but you can, instead of paying five, remove three prep counters, which is just wild. Um, and then you will return all allies to their owner's hands at fast speed, and it's also class bonus floating memory. So with the boots out, you can pretty easily cast this like fairly early into the game. It's going to be floating memory for you to continue to level up, and it just resets tempo like wild. Um, it'll also hit your own allies, so it's kind of nice because like it'll hit a dream fairy so that you can play dream fairy again. It'll hit a dungeon guide if you dungeon guide into two or three, and then you play this afterwards, now that dungeon guide's back in your hand. It's another resource um, that you can either use again if you wanna get into level three, if you use it to go to two, or if you use it to go to level three, now that's back in your hand to help pay for um, cards that you wanna keep casting because the one three body on board isn't doing anything for you. So really, really cool card. And um, basically Windwalker boots and that card is the reason that I chose to go win. Um, you also do have just a ton of defensive cards in wind though. So we have Veiling Breeze, the infamous uh, wind defensive card. So you can reveal any amount of wind element cards from your memory. Definitely make sure that you read that again. You cannot reveal non-wind cards. So unfortunately you can't reveal your Luxem cards and get triggers off that, but this is used purely just to defend your life. So you can prevent damage equal to the amount of wind that you revealed from your memory for either attack or non-attack damage, just any type of damage. So um, one of the best defensive cards in the whole game. And we are running a full four count of Innervate Agility. This is the card that I kept referring to, our defensive card that takes a lot of floating memory and stuff. Because if you are against like a really aggro deck, um, it can be really nice to go into like level one and then take a few hits and then use an Innervate Agility uh, against, you know, like let's say you're playing against Wind Ally Swarm or something. Um, you use your Innervate Agility, you're going to recover the damage that you've already taken, you're de-leveling unfortunately, but then you're giving your entire board Stealth or Sprout, um, sorry, Stealth or Spell Shroud, whichever one you want. So like, yeah, their Lorraine can still hit you with like Sword of Seeking, which is going to hurt a lot more against like Fire Decks that are ramping up an attack with that, like with uh, Rending and stuff. But against something like Wind Allies, they're not really going to be able to do pretty much anything and it just completely buys you turns. Um, this is also a really, really good option against Rai, because Rai is your almost hardest matchup. Um, it's your one way to try to just burn them out of uh, kill spells. So if they are a little reckless because they're probably not entirely sure what your strategy is and what your counts are, they might be banishing their kill spells to try to level up and everything. And honestly, if they banish enough kill spells, you have your Veilings, you have this card, you can kind of just make like eventually put them on a do you have the fifth fireball you know like do you have the uh the fireballs and the erratic bolts and everything like that and if they just don't have the cards they can't win so um yeah just a really really good card overall so that is our entire win count though so as you can tell you know that's only like half the deck is wind it's a little bit more than half so like i said those veilings and those fairy whispers can be a little suspicious but they're kind of needed for the deck honestly um, so well, let's go into the next card, which is Dungeon Guide. Uh, you know, our whole deck revolves around getting to level three. So we run four Dungeon Guide. Um, so many cards in here you just don't care about. You're just trying to get to level three and staying alive uh, during that process. So yeah, I mean, not much to be said there. We have a really cool card in here. So Cunning Broker, I've swapped between three and four of this card so many times because you really wanna see one of these kind of as fast as possible 
but you really don't want to see more than one unless it gets removed somehow, which is which is possible. So you could run this at four if you want. I just put it at three to make room for other things. But what this card is, it's a two drop zero three with stealth. So it's like almost not an ally. Uh, you're not really ever going to attack with this or do anything like an ally. Like this almost feels more like a domain or something, um, but it can be killed by things that hit allies like sweeps and like uh focus flames and things like that so it is a little bit of a liability but um you can immediately replace itself by casting it tapping it and removing prep counters from your champion to draw a card and then if it sticks around for one more turn and you're able to have enough prep counters to do it again now you've plussed off this card which is really crazy um it's also two drops so you can use this to get into your level one and level two by putting cards from your hand into memory um it checks a lot of boxes uh this is why this deck is so prep counter greedy though. Um, if you go like level one and then you go Windwalker Boots, you do get a prep counter every turn. So this will eventually read as every other turn draw a card, um, which is taking you a material deck card and a card on field. But over the long term of the game, it is generating you a lot of value. So very strong card. All right, we have Fast Cure here as well. So. You know, we've said many times before, we're trying to level, we're trying to live. You know, Fast Gear is defense and floating memory bundled into one card. Um, and because you're trying to level so fast, you will usually be a lower influence than your opponent. So just a good card there. Juggle Knives is kind of a weird card in here. So it's basically just to really ensure that you have cards to level. Um, the deal one to target champion really isn't relevant. It's basically in here as a uh, two cost fast draw card. That's essentially what it's in here for. You could honestly replace this. I just think Juggle Knives is really cool. It does have some utility as well, um, you know, but you could try something like Scry the Skies, stuff, stuff like that. But um, there's not like a perfect option for something over this. So that's just why I went with Juggle Knives. Definitely a flex spot though. We have four Resolute Stand. You don't really want to be free playing this, uh, but since so many of your defensive costs uh, or defensive cards are so cheap anyways, like in Snaring Fumes, you can technically play for free. Failing Breeze is just a one. Uh, Resolute's really good because again, you could play it for free, or if you just don't have much to do on your turn, which is very possible with this deck, it's just, uh, you know, prevent three attack damage from all these decks that are trying to do attack damage to you. So. Um, yep, you just use this, stay alive for a turn, and then since you put three cards down, you can go into any level that you want. So, just a really good defensive card. Between that, uh, Veiling and Innervate Agility, you have four flo or 12 Floodgates in the entire deck, which is really crazy, actually. It's like 20% of your deck or something is just straight hard Floodgates, and you have a bunch of defensive cards on top of that. So, very, very uh, control-ass deck. Also, I completely forgot that we ran this. Um, Peaceful Reunion. So you actually have 16 complete Floodgates in the deck. Because our champion doesn't really attack until the very late game, because we don't really play any units that want to attack, this card is completely busted in this deck. Um, you don't really need to do too much on your turn either. There's not a lot of things that you're trying to do in the early to mid game that like take up a lot of memory on your, sorry, not memory, but um, reserve cost on your turn. So this just feels like a free card in the deck. Uh, absolutely love this card. And yeah, you just have so much control. Um, all right, now let's go ahead and get to our win con, which is a little sketchy at best. <laughs> so we have 1000 refractions. This is a very unique card. The reason that we only run one is because this card will always return itself to your hand. So unless you let this card get banished by something like Frostbind, um, you never need more than one. So you can play this, you prepare it, um, which is removing one prep counter, which you should have plenty of by the time that you're getting to be able to play this card. And then on hit, so also it does need to do damage. If your opponent prevents it, um, it will not trigger the on hit effect. On hit needs to deal damage. That's very important. That's the other way outside of something like Frostbind that you can lose this card, which again, this card is one of your win cons. So you don't wanna really lose it that easily. Um, you wake up your champion, return this to hand, and you also have your Xander level two effect. So if you're attacking a rested unit, every time you play this, it'll be dealing two damage. You have the Proxy's Vault card that every time you prepare a card, you get to draw if you have less than uh, six influence. Um, and so you can use this, deal a bunch of damage, refuel your whole hand, and just like put your opponent in a position where 
you were doing nothing except for just these really big defensive plays, veiling, peaceful, innervator jelly, all this stuff that just felt like the entire time you were just not doing anything and your opponent was slowly killing you. And then you flip the tables on them and you just go, bam, here's 10 damage into your face. And I'm also gonna completely refill my hand, be on the same amount of um, you know, resources as you, and now we're in a much more balanced game state. So this is a pretty crucial card in the deck. Uh, and then your other crucial cards are three Luxem Sight. You could definitely go higher. You could go four because this is a pretty crucial card to see. Um, running three Luxem Sight, and I'll just spoil it right now, three Light Weaver's Assault. Uh, these counts are really low, and it definitely forces you to want to keep them in hand instead of banishing them. Um, but they're also really bad cards in the early game. So it's odd. Um, I don't know exactly how I feel on these counts. I would need to run a lot more games with it to like really feel settled on a number, but these have felt okay to me so far. And yeah, so this is your win con. The Luxem Sight is just another defensive card that's gonna keep you alive. You never cast it to draw a card unless you are in an absolutely necessary spot to do that. But normally you're just putting it down to pay for something else like a peaceful uh, reunion or something like that. Um, and then you're going to reveal it with your champion, draw, recover three, not draw, sorry, recover three, make them put something down. And that's like how you kind of guarantee to actually use Thousand Refractions as well. You'll get to this turn where you basically force your opponent to put their whole hand down. And if they didn't do something preemptive like a Resolute before they put everything down, um, then you know that Thousand Refractions is going to hit and you can abuse it. So yeah, and then Light Weaver's Assault, uh, you know, you're not really building up too much towards that like double assault kind of thing that Water Xander and even Fire Luxem Xander, like, um, Noel from Chess Club uh, profiled on our channel recently. The deck doesn't do that as much. This is more in here to control the board, honestly, um, which is why it's at a three of, because you do have a couple of alternate win cons. But if you do get enough resources to do that whole double assault and uh, do a ton of damage at once, you can do that. That is an option in here. All right, and sideboard, we have basically a ton of Rye Hate. So we have a Safeguard Amulet, um, to prevent spell damage, you can use that against things like Fire Xander and even uh, Erupting and things like that as well. And then we also have four Blanche. So this is trying to prevent as much spell damage as possible uh, in addition to the Safeguard as well. So you can, like I said, in the main deck, kind of just try to make them run out of uh, spell cards that are going to kill you between the Blanche, the Innervator Agilities, the Veilings, the Safeguard Amulet. You know, they have to they have to get through a lot of cards, which they're usually not prepared for. So that's your way to try to win against that kind of deck. We have an Azure Trinket in here just to try to keep the erupting pressure off, to try to keep the Fire Agala Rain pressure off. Tr just try to let you live a little bit longer. We have the Viridian Trinket here because Frostbinds can be very, very devastating against this deck. And then we have the GCR, just in case you don't feel like you need that, land, uh, that Grail. Grail is definitely not needed in every single matchup but uh, it kind of just feels like it's an auto loss against Fire Agra Lorraine if you don't run either Trinket or Grail in the main. And I really didn't want to run Trinket in the main. So um, just ran Grail in the main with a ring in the side. So pretty simple sideboard. This might be a little bit longer of a video, but uh, you know, Assassin's not that commonly played right now. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, some, maybe some of the newer players on our channel, you know, we see you guys continue to subscribe and build up the channel. So I know that the community is still out there growing. So I wanted to address the newer players, show them a really fun deck to keep that passion alive with the game because there's so many cool things that you can do with this game. It's insane. And uh, yeah, hopefully just fully explain it. So if you guys didn't understand anything, you have questions about anything, you know, feel free to drop a comment down below in our YouTube channel or join our Discord and ask us there. We're pretty responsive there as well. So thank you guys all so much for watching another video. We'll see you guys soon. Peace.